Anoka Area Ice Arena here tonight on QC TV for a Northwest Suburban Conference High School Boys Hockey matchup. Intersection matchup here with the Tino Grays traveling to Anoka to take on the Tornadoes. Drop of the puck here in just minutes uh, from Anoka. Anoka has not beaten Tatino Grace since 2016. Tatino Grace right at 500 at 5-5 five and five through their first 10. Meanwhile, Anoka looking for their third win of the season and as I mentioned, their first since 2016 against this TG Eagles team. The calendar has flipped from 2023 to 2024. That means we're only a month and a half away from section play as these teams uh, start to get wound up and tuned up for the playoffs coming up in February. Tornadoes and the Eagles from Anoka coming up next on QCTV Sports. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20-10. Touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes. Yes. Goals out of the place. Yes. The Huskies win their first state championship.
And welcome to the Noka Area Ice Arena along with the Pete Hayes. I'm Jim Erickson. We have high school boys hockey here tonight, Northwest Suburban Conference. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast. And as you've been watching here and listening to the sounds of the game, you saw Tatino Grace getting on the board first. 305 into the game. Horak from Anderson and Gallivan. Horak's first goal of the season. And Tatino Grace has the lead with 11.26 left here in the first period. Pete, you've been watching intently here. What have you seen so far as Anoka comes back quickly through neutral? Well, not a lot of scoring opportunities so far, Jim, for either team. I think that was the first shot on goal for Tatino, and they put it in the back of the net. Both teams kind of feeling themselves out right now to, to see what each team has. And, uh, you know, it's getting up and down the ice pretty good right now, though. Lauren Lafferty is in the nets here tonight for the Anoka Tornadoes. 2-11 and 0 on the season. Tatino at 5-5 and 0. This will be a high stick as soon as Tatino Grace touches the puck. 10:53 left first period. One to nothing from the Anoka Area Ice Arena. You know, early on here, it seems like Anoka only has a couple wins on the season against the Tatino Grace team. That's 500. They're matching their speed right now, so that's a good sign for Anoka. Here's the draw for the Tornadoes. Trevor Lang, their top line center. Leads them in goals with three, along with Devang and Cedar Strand, also with three goals on the season here for the Tornadoes. Battle back behind that Tatino Grace net. Netminder tonight for the Eagles is Will Warren. Both of these teams have pretty much split their goalies right down the middle as far as minutes and games. Warren starting his fifth game of the season. Their backup tonight is Matt Yurimovich. He's also started five games, so the sixth start here tonight for Will Warren. He's in the net to our left. As Tatino Grace has the puck and they bring it across. Heifert dumps it in, back behind the net for the Tornadoes. Pender up to the point, held in Gallivan. Gallivan uh, coming back from an injury. In fact, Tatino Grace is a couple of players coming back. Horak, who scored his first goal of the season, he's played fewer games than his teammates coming back from an injury as is Gabe Gallivan, who's only played four games and returning from an injury here tonight as we get an icing against the Anoka Tornadoes, 9.55 remaining in our first period. You know, really important for Anoka to keep the Tino off the board here until they can get a, a tally. And especially when you, you're starting the season like Anoka has, you don't want to get down because then there's some doubt. So as long as they can stay in this game, better opportunity they're going to have. Hold back to uh, Jimmy Potch. Potch up to the left side. Shot from there goes up and out of play. Thomas Quast is their 180 pound 6'3 defenseman. And uh, he's really their anchor. He's got good size at 6'3 and his shot deflected out of play. You know, they have some good sized kids on this Tatino Grace team. And Oka, you know, they're, they're a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit quicker, but Tatino Grace, they're going to be using their uh, size to their advantage tonight. Face off on that left wing. Up to the point, another face-off win here for Tatino Grace. Here's a the, the shot by Quas that goes wide. Tipped back out to the Tatino Grace line, and the Eagles will go back and reset there. Trey Peck, their head coach Tim Parco says, is very high hockey IQ. He's been tendered in the BCHL, British Columbia Hockey League. Tatino Grace in their own zone. Quas again. Headman pass, Clayton Durr brings it across offside on TG with 9.13 left to go. First period, 1-0 in favor of Tatino Grace. Anoka is a young team. Uh, I believe they only have five or six seniors on there. So they're just trying to build right now to the end of the season, trying to build into next year. And I'm sure Coach Machula just wants them to play good, solid hockey and see what happens. Parker Nedlin taking the draw here. Pulled back by Gus Hay. Hay will dump it in here for Tatino Grace. Eagles swinging around. Eight minutes into the first period. Bouncing puck back out to neutral. And back to go get it is Thomas Heifer. He's 6'5", 215 pound defenseman. They got some trees back at the blue line. Long pass for Pekarski for Tatino Grace. A little bit too long, but the Eagles get to it first up along that end wall. Roger Murad, who has four goals on the season. 
Clayton Durr has nine goals and Trey Peck has 12 goals the two goal scoring leaders here for the Eagles entering this game at 5 5 and 0 2 and 0 in the conference. Anoka 0 4 and 0 in the Northwest Suburban Conference. And the Tornadoes push it back the other way. Here's Soli in across the line. Tito did a nice job getting back. Aiden Soli, third line winger here for the Tornadoes. You know, Tatino Grace trying to build on that 5-5 five and five season. You know, second half of the season coming up, you're pretty set in what your lineup looks like. You know, now they want to make a push here to section time. Murad had it, intercepted. Back comes Soli again. Bumped off the puck as he brings it across that line. Check that that was Beaver. Far side, right to side D. Swung around, it's on the near side of the rink. Back up out of the zone by Tatino Grace. Good job of the neutral zone, and the Tornadoes find it there. Trevor Lang comes in. Leading score from last year with 15 points, and he's all alone out in front. Tried to go top shelf. He had a little bit to work with over the shoulder of the goaltender, Warren, and it went over the crossbar off the glass and pushed now back the other way here by the Eagles. Horak, the goal scorer from earlier, drops it for Box. His shot got blocked. And it'll be tipped back out to neutral and resetting Gabe Gallivan. Gallivan had three points in his four games before getting injured, and there's his second goal of the season, a wrist shot up over the left shoulder short side on the goaltender, Lauren Lafferty, and it's 2-0 to Tino Grace. Yeah, he sniped that one. We're going to get another look at a really nice shot. If anything, you would have wanted Lauren to get out of the net a little bit further. No, to cut down that angle, but I don't know if she thought that he was going to shoot that one or not. Here's another look at it, pulled it back oh. and went upper third over Lauren's shoulder. 2 0. Gallivan second of the season. 9 50 time of the goal into Tino Grace. Off to a 2 0 start. Last year's game was a 4 2 to Tino Grace win. They have uh, won five in a row, starting with a 3-2 overtime loss back in the 18-19 season. A 3-2 to Tino Grace overtime win, overtime loss for Anoka. Now if you're Coach Pachulis, you want your maroon and white to keep working hard here. Not put your head down, keep grinding away. Eagles bounce it back to the blue line. Team captain here for the Anoka Tornadoes pushing it back up. Back onto the stick here of Jackson Provancha. Two goals, seven points on the season for Anoka. Totino almost coughed it up. They do. Centering pass attempt on that far side by Sukup. Picked back up by the Eagles, and they come out to center. Onto the stick of Peck. Peck trying to split a couple of defenders coming in. Good job getting back Parker Nedlin here for Anoka. It'll be cleared the other way by Totino Grace or by the Tornadoes, and the Eagles will track it down in their zone. Kodrowski, and then for the right side, they cough it up, and the Tornadoes get a shot on net, and it's in the glove of the netminder, and Warren will hold on here with 5.54 left to go, 2-0 to Tino Grace. You know, Tino Grace gets that second goal right after Anoka has a great chance with uh, Lang, and Lang's the guy you want to have that puck in front of the net. He got shut down. They came the other way and made it 2 to nothing. Gus Hay taking the draw for Tino. It's one by Anoka. They get it out to the point. And the shot from that right point by Parker Nedlin got blocked. Comes back out to the neutral zone right in front of the Totino Grace bench. Their head coach is Tim Parkos. He's in his sixth season. Puck uh, pops up into his bench far side. He's also an assistant general manager and the director of scouting for the Youngstown Phantoms of the USHL. He's been doing that for three years. Well, that's a busy man. It is. <laughs> that uh, puck and a helmet. Gets knocked loose off of the head of Roger Murad, and they'll whistle that down immediately anytime that happens. Murad will head to the bench and uh, reset that helmet. Yeah, especially in high school hockey, you want to make sure that you get that, that whistle blown and player off the ice. Hate to see anybody hit their head. Ben Box taking the draw here against uh, Alec Dahlvang. Starting center here tonight for the Tornadoes. They started Dalvang, Cedar Strand, Lang, Beaver, Provancha, and Lafferty. They're starting six here tonight earlier this period. Tino back to try to get it. Kodrowski had it, lost it, pushed back into the corner here by Anoka. Dalvang for the Tornadoes. Along the end wall, 
Kudrowski grabs it, plays it up but not out. Held in Mortensen at the point here for Anoka. Lost it, gets it back. Swings it back around. Lang, team captain. Here for the Tornadoes in deep, trying to find a way to break through here. Get some offensive chances, trailing 2-0 in this first period. Kudrowski, pass ahead, up to the line. Held in at the line by the Tornadoes. Nice job, Nedlin. Then a long pass came across, intercepted. Cam Mortensen in Able to anticipate that, and he wait for his team to get onside, then he bounced it in on the netminder. Yeah, nice play there by the sophomore, Mortensen. Read that puck well, dumped it into the corner, and gave him a chance to forecheck. Tatino again, looking up ice. Left to right, Kudrowski. He's 6-3. They have a defenseman that's 6-3, 6-3, and then they got Heifer who's 6-5. Like we said, they got some trees. Comes back out to neutral, dumped in Mason Beaver. Starting defenseman here tonight for the Tornadoes. Beaver manning the point. Takes a shot off of the stick. And the netminder Warren will direct it up into that protective mesh netting. 2 nothing here to Tino Grace. Well, one of the strengths for Anoka is their defense with Jackson Provancha and Mason Beaver. Both of them have played for three years. So uh, they're the strength of the team right there along with Parker Nedlin, another senior on the defensive end for Anoka. Face off in the Tatino Gray zone. They've done a good job on the face offs here so far tonight. Gallivan, who has the second goal of the game, he works it up out to neutral. Picked up. Oslin has. And again, uh, down the middle. Rosano has started seven games. Lafferty has started six, and now seven. This is their seventh start of the season. Puck is behind her, pushed out by the Tornadoes, and back out to neutral, setting up his pack. They quickly come right back. Bakarski across the line, forced wide, defended there by Beaver, tried to throw it out in front. Ends up in the corner, up to the point. Jimmy Potch, a six-foot defenseman. He's small compared to the other D-men here for Tatino Grace. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I know how that goes, Jim. I have a son who played defense at six foot five. Yeah. Every time he checks somebody, though, his elbows are in his face. And he right. Was in the penalty box. He's been in the penalty box. That <laughs> is an issue. Tatino from behind the net, centering pass by Gus Hay, got knocked down and played out to neutral. Potch had it, lost it. And he gets some help there from Gus Hay. Hay flip left wing. Murad on that wing. On the attack with Hay going to the net. And then Murad gets back to it in the corner. Near side point, Gallivan. Cross ice, crossed. Wide of the net. Rung around. Two at first, Gallivan. Final two minutes of the first period. Tina Grace scoring a pair here this period, leading it 2-0. Working up to the point, crossed. Down the wall, outside the circle, in low. Puts on the brakes, turns back around. Leaves it for her Horak, who had the first goal of the game. 3.05 in here tonight. Horak tried to make a move along the goal line. It's up into his body. Bouncing for Hay. Hay again, Horak. Up to the line. The quash shot. Hits bodies out in front. It's loose in the slot. Tornadoes clear it out of danger, but not out of the zone as we near a minute left. Yeah, Anoka's third line stuck out there right now. Can't get it out of the zone. This is danger time for the Tornadoes. Looks yeah, like they long, make it out. Long shift, not a lot of gas. Good job there coming the other way, Dalvang. And he takes it as far as he can get so they can get uh, five new skaters out there. He'll leave the ice now as he dumps it in. Trevor Lang gets some help from Folstrom. 40 seconds left here, first period. Bounces up to the line. Couple of Tornadoes fighting for it there. Grab by Tatino Grace, overskating the puck is Box. Box still finds Murad. Murad at the far side half wall. 
to Ben Box. Four goals, 12 points on the season. Pile of bodies, tornado goes down. Up out to neutral. Under 20 seconds now left to go. Dump in intercepted there by Heifert. He goes rink wide, Quast, and that's up into the benches with 12 seconds left to go here in the first period. It is 2-0 uh, to Tino Grace. Yeah, I like Anoka's response after that second goal. They didn't put their heads down. They keep working hard. A little surprise with Tino after scoring that second goal on the top of the circle. And they're, they're trying to be a little too pretty in my mind, you know, where you can just shoot that puck after seeing what happened the last time. Waylon Black was in there to take the draw. Number 15 out on the ice here for the Tornadoes. Totino pulls it back. They tip it along the near side, and that'll be the end of our first period of play. One in the books here at the Anoka Area Ice Arena here on QCTV. Totino Grace 2, Anoka nothing. Club started two years ago and was basically inspired by my own children to have a club at the school that I knew that they would definitely like as they're not bad into sports and things of that nature. So I wanted to create something that I knew my family would like. The games that we provide are not like the ones that I'll necessarily find at home. Uh, we don't do Monopoly or uh, Scattergories or things like that. We do Tiny Epic Dinosaurs and Ant Hughes and Clues and uh, snake oil, which is what they're playing in the background right now, for the games to kind of broaden the perspectives and show what else is out there, that, that there really is a game out there for everyone here. I would say it's a fun experience to play games with your friends and meet new people that maybe looks like not people that you know that would play some different games, and you also get to learn a bunch of new games that you probably haven't heard of. Club's a lot of fun. We play various types of games from board games to card games. It's a real open atmosphere. You won't feel any kind of criticism about any part of you. In like five years, I see the club um, expanding. Hopefully more kids come, bring more games, expand horizons. There's been days when they aren't up for gaming, they just need a safe place to be. We're open to it. You know, if they just want to be here around friends that are, you know, weird like them, that's awesome too. The best part of the club is just getting to sit down and play board games with other people and make new relationships. Club is having fun with my friends, being idiots, and just being silly within the games. So, especially in this day and age where, you know, it's all available, but still really scary having a place that, you know, that you can go to that is going to be safe, that is going to be welcoming. And, you know, you can be with the other weirdos that you want to be with, which was really hard to find when I was younger. I think it's incredibly important. Well, I hope we look more people as well. I'm hoping to get our word out more that such a place exists and uh, that, you know, people can come and play games. and. Possibly, you know, in five years, maybe even create our own games based off of the games that we've been playing and stuff like that. Come and have fun. Like, that's really all there is. Come play games and have fun.
Greetings, dear viewer, on the next episode of Game Sharks. We are wrapping up the year. We're talking about our top one, two, three, four, five games of the year with a couple honorable mentions as well. We enjoyed this year so much. It was a stacked year. Everybody won when it came to gaming. And we hope that you'll join us for a lengthy discussion to wrap up this year. Until then, take care. Hi, I'm Pete Turok, President of the Yanoka Area Chamber of Commerce, inviting you to watch the January edition of the Chamber Report right here on QCTV. We are kicking off the new year with one of the biggest member profile segments we've had in a long time. What's a member profile segment? It's a chance for you to find out who some of the many members of the Yanoka Area Chamber of Commerce are, and you will hear about their businesses, why you should potentially do business with them, and a whole lot more. It's all coming up on this edition of the Anoka Area Chamber Report. The Anoka Area Chamber of Commerce has been a staple of the cities of Andover, Anoka, Champlin, Coon Rapids, now then Oak Grove, Ramsey, and St. Francis for over 70 years. The Chamber is an invaluable resource for the business community and helps local businesses and business owners connect with their residents, enhance their credibility within the community, and build connections with other businesses. With your Chamber membership, you'll be able to attend networking events, submit articles to the Chamber magazine, be featured on QCTV's monthly program, The Chamber Report, and receive special discounts available only to Chamber members. To join the Chamber, fill out the application form on www.anokaareachamber.com and mail it to mail at anokaareachamber.com or to the Anoka Area Chamber of Commerce at 12 Bridge Square, Anoka, Minnesota, 55303. Hi, this is Cole with Anoka County SHIP and I have a question for you. When was the last time you moved from your seat? Movement makes all the difference in living the healthiest life you can, especially if you're working from home or the office where you're probably sitting down all day. So whether it's getting up for a cup of coffee or walking over to check out the window, a little bit of movement can make a lot of difference for your health. So get up and get moving with Anoka County SHIP every day at GoAnokaCounty.org. Thanks. I think most teams start with the same goals, ultimately get down to St. Paul at the end of the season. We have a stacked section, um, so I mean, I, I think it's one of the deepest ones in the state. But, you know, ultimately it's just for the girls to come together um, and be able to say that at the end of the season they had no regrets. They just left everything on the ice and they gave it everything they had. I think that this season we're going to succeed because we're going to lean off of each other and learn from each other and we're going to grow from that and have a great team environment. The personality of our team is like honest, a very uplifting environment. It's a very, it's full of girls who are willing to learn from each other and to help each other to succeed more. Uh, we're all like really good friends and teammates and we all like, work very hard together. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good mix of some senior leadership uh, with some youth um, and I think when it all comes together it's going to be fun to watch. Watch us this year, you know, see how far we make it. <laughs> Let's go CPCR. <laughs>
it, it, they just become this super happy, you know, they're t they come in and their tail's wagging versus being a little nervous. So that's definitely my favorite part is just, I get really excited when, when, they, when they make that, that, that leap into playing and making friends and things like that. I live in Andover. Um, I have four daughters and they all attend the Andover schools. Um, and so when I was looking to add a second location, I really, really wanted to, to go to the stick with Andover. Um, it's a growing community, um, you know, there's tons and tons of kids and families and usually with kids and families comes dogs. Um, you know, you, you drive anywhere or walk anywhere, there's always people out walking their dogs and I just felt like it was just something that the Andover community needed. I have an absolutely amazing staff. I work really hard to find um, people that share the same passion with the dogs as I do. And they just, they truly do an amazing job. And I can assure you that they take very, very good care of each and every dog that is here because they do feel so, so warmly about all of the dogs that are, do come in. It's just a really great community um, full of lots of great people. And I love being able to, you know, go to the gym or go to a, an event or a sporting event or just even Walmart, Target, you know, restaurants. And I see people who I take care of their dogs. So it's just so much fun to have that link to where we live, plus having a business here. Um, it just makes it, pulls it all together. And I mean, I'm constantly like meeting people that I know and then they, they bring their dog here and they're like, oh my gosh, you own this place? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's just a fun connection between the community I live in and um, you know, families and their pets and things like that. Heading down West River Road in Champlin, you may notice some construction happening at the Chandler Park site. Hey, that construction is an effort to provide additional parking and will make a significant improvement to the Mississippi Crossings development area. The Mississippi Crossings proved to be a fun, exciting, and beautiful addition to the community in 2023. The construction at Chandler Park will provide more parking opportunities going into 2024. To stay up to date, be sure to follow QCTV as well as the City of Champlin for all updates related to construction in your community. Champlin's 5th Annual Trout Ice Fishing Contest is coming up on Saturday, February 10th. Registration will be open on January 9th, and the event will cap at 500 participants, so be sure to get registered early. The Champlin Trout Ice Fishing Contest is a great community event and is open to all ages. As always, there will be prizes and raffles, so again, be sure to mark your calendars to register on January 9th the event will be held on February 10th. For more information, be sure to visit Champlin's website for event rules and parking maps. Hey, get out there and get registered, and we'll see you on the ice on February 10th. Back at the Anoka Ice Arena, and uh, we have uh, second period action about to uh, commence here with the Totino Grays Eagles hosting the Anoka Tornadoes by a score of 2-0. Here's that first period recap. And it was Totino Grace with a pair of goals, couple of good chances there in and off the rebound. Getting the goal was Horak, his first of the season. We mentioned Colton Horak coming back uh, from injury. And that made it 1-0 at the 3.05 mark. Anderson and Gallivan with the assist. And here comes Gallivan, second point of the period. An unassisted goal, a rising wrister there, Pete. Yeah, that was a nice shot right there uh, by Totino Grace. You know, Anoka's shown that they can skate with him, Jim. I think uh, Anoka's going to have to be a little more physical. I know Totino has the bigger players, but Anoka's going to have to start yep. rubbing some people out and uh, get into the front of the net where it might get a little bit nasty. Other stats, Totino Grace, 10-4 to four shots on goal. Super fan stats, 9-6 in favor of Totino Grace. I told uh, Jeff that we'll just go 9.5 to 5 then. We'll, uh, you know, go between the two. Uh, Face-offs were 10-5 to five in favor of Totino Grace and Horak and Gallivan. 
the uh, two goal scorers here in the first period tonight. And depth might be an issue here tonight for Anoka as well because they are missing a couple of players. Braden Thorson is out. Also, uh, Teddy Machulis, the uh, son of Ted. Uh, Teddy Jr., I guess it would be, right, Pete? That's exactly right. Uh, he is out with an injury here as well for the Anoka Tornadoes, and we're underway. It is period number two here from the Anoka Area Ice Arena. And the Eagles will go back. Horak. Tornado's trying to establish the four-check early, and they do pick the puck away. They get it out to the point, and a shot goes wide. You know, that's what you're looking for right there. Get the puck to the point, get some people out in front, get in the eyes of the goalie. Mason Beaver with that shot from the left side. Another shot here from the right side, and it's still in. Held in nicely here by the Tornado's. Nice opening possession and opening shift here to start the second period. Totino now with the puck. It's Ben Box. Box, four goals on the season, does a nice job dancing to the slot, try to get it to the backhand, lost it into the corner, up to the point, Heifert, Box, and then back in low. Osland being watched there by Anoka, all the way up high to Peck. Wrist shot and gloved, and held on to by Lafferty, and a shot from way out by Thomas Heifer. We mentioned uh, Trey Peck, high hockey IQ, leads a team with 12 goals. He has four two-goal games. Three goals the last two games, and he had the overtime game-winning goal against St. Louis Park. Totino Grace has won their last two games. They beat Park of Cottage Grove 5-3 and St. Louis Park 3-2. This is Totino Grace's first game since December 23rd. Shot from the high slot. Another save by Lafferty. Back to the point. Now a good shift here by Totino Grace after another face-off win. They had a 10-5 edge in that department. Tornadoes in their own zone. They get the breakout pass. It was onto the stick of Sokup there originally and then tipped away. Now Sokup comes back with it through the center circle. Knocked down to the ice by Durr. And we've got a stick on the ice here near side. Sokup lost his stick. Second line center here for the Tornadoes as the Eagles continue to work now out of their zone. Down the near wing is Peck. Long cross ice pass. Shot from there. Oslin with a wrister. Didn't get all of it. Did make it to the net. Rebound back below that goal line. Two minutes into the second period. Yeah, really important for Anoka to get that next goal. You know, they don't average over two goals a game, so they, they can't get down 3-0 here early in the second period. Anoka averaging 1.62 goals a game. Totino Grace 3.60. Totino right at 500 in their uh, goals against and goals for stats are almost right at 500 as well. Split even. And a shot from the right side off of the stick of Lafferty again. Totino Gray scores 3.6 a game. They give up 3.8. Well, that's, so that's why they're 500, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> you do the math. And they're 5-5-0, five, five oh, as we mentioned. They were just about 500 last year, 12-13-1. Gliding in is Durr, a shot that's blocked, deflects. It goes out of play as we're just under three minutes into the second period. 2-0 Totino Grace. You know, this is really the time of year like I said you have your lineup set you're a Tatino Grace you're five and five what are we going to end the season at are we going to be uh, 15 and 10 uh, we're going to be 10 and 10 you know you want to make sure that uh, you really start winning hockey right. games right now to have a good record going into the section this is like uh, moving Saturday on the PGA Tour Absolutely. once you get it past January 1st it's moving day well my Anoka math went 10 to 10 and 15 and 10, so I don't know. I lost five games <laughs> there, there somewhere. Five there. You know what happened there? <laughs> they had to vacate them for some case, reason. Yeah, yeah. Violations. Uh, puck in the corner along the end wall. It's in the Anoka zone. Totino's Hay grabs it. Gus comes up the wall, dumps it right back in. Murad going back and forth. Up to the point. Gallivan and a shot and a save by Lauren Lafferty. Making her seventh start of the season there. Cradles that faceoff will be to her left. Well, Lafferty's coming out a little bit better than she did on that first goal. I think she learned from it. You know, she's had a solid season. Here's another look at it. She comes out to the top of the blue and makes a nice save. Battle here in the Anoka zone off of the draw. Tornadoes end up with it on that 50-50 puck. Here's Soli dumped in. Quickly onto it, though, the Eagles. Flipped it up a little bit behind Pekarski, able to track it down behind Moratti, brings it across the line. They're on side, bears down on the right wing. Lost it, gets it back up to the point. Kodrowski in a shot through, kicked away by Lafferty into the corner. 
Goalie for the Tornadoes getting some touches here. Tornadoes trying to clear one right up along the shelf. Another save by Lafferty right off of her stick. And it goes up the wall. Pitch forked but not out by Soli. Still into the zone. Good forecheck holding it in here. The Eagles leave it back to Quast. And he floats one in and that finds the glove of Lafferty. And she'll hold on the faceoff in the Anoka zone. Yeah, I would think Coach Machulis would try to keep those that top pairing of Provencia out on the ice with Mason Beaver. Here's another look at that shot. When that third line, like you said, the depth is a little bit uh, questionable right now for Anoka. That line's struggling a little bit in their own zone. Yeah, they've been pretty much uh, just able to skate uh, two sets of D and mostly just two lines here tonight. We haven't seen that third line at all, Charlie Jensen. Aiden Soley has played some. Ben Carlson also listed on the third line. Cleared down. This will be an icing here on the Anoka Tornadoes with 12.26 left second period. You know, it's nothing against that third line either. They're all young kids. You know, haven't seen a whole lot of varsity experience. And all of a sudden you get that first line of Tatino Grace out there against them. It's kind of a mismatch. Here comes that draw on the near wing just to our left. Ben Box, their top line center off of the dry, looped around the Anoka man. Got a shot in from a low angle. Comes back through the slot. Trevor Lang for the Tornadoes. Had it go past his stick and now corner to corner. Up the wall to Totino's box. Up to the point, Heifert. Goal scores here tonight. Horak and Gallivan for Totino all in the First period, shot from the point again, Heifert off the stick of Lafferty, off of that glass, deep in the Anoka zone. A lot of the action here the last couple of minutes has been in the Tornado zone. Yeah, absolutely. Good forecheck being put on by Totino Grace here. A lot of pressure. Tornadoes tried to clear, and then a shot deep right side, Horak out of play. Yeah, Anoka's got to get their feet moving again here. Get that puck over the red line, shoot it in get four checking. They don't have a lot of players that are going to go one on one with these Tatino Grace defenders and beat them. So let's get it in. Go to work. Find your points. Get people to the front of the net. See what can happen. Caden Sukup second line center to take the draw here for the Tornadoes going up against Trey Peck. Back behind the net. Controlled by Durr. He's got Cam Morrison all over him. The pass to the point, and it's cleared all the way down by Totino Grace. They clear it on themselves. And the netminder, Will Warren, who we haven't mentioned his name a lot in the game here tonight. Stick handles there. He's 2-3-0, a 4.20 goals against. 842 save percentage. Getting the start here tonight, his sixth start of the season. Nice break out there by Totino Grace. D to D to that far wing right on the tape. Six-minute mark of the second period. Tornadoes, head man pass right into the stick of Folstrom. Folstrom comes in, but he's got Quast on him. Carries that puck deep below the goal line. Picked off Potch, and it comes out to center. Durr. Drop pass, Peck to the net. That's blocked. Getting a body in the way of that. Morrison up to the point. Held in Quast in a shot. Grazed off a leg into the corner. Pinching down on the rebound is Gallivan. Behind the net, Durr. Oslin, Durr, a couple of tornadoes on them. Oslin pulls it out of there. Puck pops up into the air. Durr finds it again, then he feeds it right side. Nice shot. Oslin, though, sent it wide. Good look. His shot missed. We got a broken stick on the right wing. Shot from the high slot, taken by Peck. And it's up to the point, held in by Gallivan. Gallivan has to sidestep the broken stick. One broke in half. It didn't break completely, but... Uh, She's bent and will never be used again. Boy, there was a nice block there by Parker Netlin, sacrificing the body when the puck came right into the slot. He went down and blocked it. Nice play by Yanoka captain. Quas to Tino Grace with a breakout. The pass just missed. They were coming through neutral with some speed. Pekarski tracking it down. And Mason Beaver in there along the end wall. Get some help. And it is poked free by Charlie Jensen, but not out. Didn't have enough mustard. Gallivan holds it in. Wrists one wide to the near corner. Karam comes up the wall. Pekarski wanted to leave it there. Intercepted. Logan Penter 
Sends it down here on the near side, back in the Totino zone. Here's that third line for Anoka out there. Looks like they're switching it up right now. Nearing nine minutes left. Heifert. And the defenseman here for Totino Grace here, not afraid to, to activate and get into the offense as well. They'll jump in the play. Hey. If you're big and you can skate, that's not a bad thing to do. Trying to curl to the middle as Horak had it tipped away high in the air off of a glove. Picked off by the Tornadoes and off a skate. It's going to end up deep in the Tornado zone. You know, it's kind of twofold, Jim. You know, Anoka had, has not shown a lot of offensive power, so why not go? But then again, you're up 2-0, so why go? Buck high in the air, just stayed in play off of that glass deep in the Anoka zone. Past the midway mark of the game here. 8.15 left, second period. Tornadoes get it. Feet ahead. Didn't connect to Lang. Eagles come right back in on the attack into the zone. Gus Hay looking to feed. Behind the net, little pivot there by Horak. Tried to walk out in front. Got the puck back. It's in the crease. It's down. The goaltender's down. Another backhand from the opposite side with Gus Hay coming around. And Lauren Lafferty does a nice job holding on tight and keeping her ground in that blue paint. Faceoff will be in her zone. Yeah, here's another look at it. Nice job by Lafferty. Has the paddle down. A lot of traffic out in front. Noki defenders down. Tatino Grace is on the ice. and That's how they scored their first goal. But nice job by Noka and Lafferty to keep it out of the net. Right wing draw. Box wins it for Tatino Grace. Eagles get it down that far wing wall. Oslin cross ice pass. Errant intercepted Anoka. Will Cedarstrand, three goals on the season. One of the tri leaders in that department. Lang, Dalvang, actually four leaders. Uh, Bruner has three goals, as does Cedarstrand. The goal scores and leaders here for the season for the Anoka Tornadoes. Big hit right there by Lang. Like to see Anoka do a little bit more of that. Puck comes out, shot that uh, short hops on the shot from the neutral zone. Blake Weinhold. Warren had to be ready for that one. Knocked it down. Sometimes that short hop can be tricky for the goaltender. As the Eagles play it right back deep in the Noka zone. They try to break out. A little give and go. Pass back up ahead. A little too far for Sukup. He then takes a hit at neutral from Quast. Swung around by Anoka. Yeah, he ran into one of those big defensemen we've been talking about. Kind of bounced right off him, but he got to hand it to him for going in and taking a hit. Those guys are like a brick wall. Bravancha comes in, takes a big check along the glass, and that's going to be a penalty and an interference call. So uh, Jackson Provancha bringing that puck down that far side wall gets checked with the puck uh, out of the vicinity, and that'll be... An offside call and a two-minute minor penalty. Kudrowski will head to the box for Totino Grace. And first power play and penalty of the night. Yeah, here's another look at it right now as Provancha, one of the captains for Anoka, kind of got hooked there. I don't know about the interference. The puck seemed to be pretty close, but that was the call. And I'm sure that uh, Machulis and the Tornadoes will take it. Anoka's power play, 7.4%. Four power play goals on the season, four for 54. Penalty kill for Totino Grace. At 72.7%, they've given up nine power play goals. Wrist shot, and then it comes back to the point. Quick shot from there by Nedland. Off of the goaltender stick and high in the air back to the near corner. Up to the point. Beaver shot. That hit bodies. May have made it all the way into Warren. Ends up in the corner. Near side here. Golden opportunity for Anoka here on the man advantage. Can't quite hold it in. They'll have to reset out at neutral. Yeah, when you're only at 7%, I like what Anoka is doing, those defensemen taking the shots. Anytime you get an opportunity, let's do it. Try to get pucks to the net. Pounce on the rebounds. Maybe get a redirection. And the pass onto the stick. Trevor Lang comes in. Bears down on the right side wing. With that backhand, and it's out to the point. Beaver had the puck go off his stick and back out of the zone. They'll have to set up again. Here comes Lang. Gains a zone, wrist shot, hit the goalie up high. Warren knocks it down, held into the zone nicely by Beaver. Beaver tried to go back door. He saw Forth Folstrom going to the net. And just a late reaction there. I think a pretty good idea. Tatino Grace grabs it and clears. Yeah, nobody was in front of the net there for Anoka. Beaver took the shot, but goalie could see it all the way. 
30 seconds left to go in the power play here for Anoka. 5-10 left second period. 2-0. Tornado's back deep in their own zone. 20 seconds now left to go in the man advantage. Chatino, short-handed for check here. Box gets to it, and he'll just decide to play it all the way back to his blue line. Folstrom almost intercepted that for Anoka. Yeah, Anoka's going to want to get those two defensemen off. Nedland and Beaver have been out there for two minutes now, so... Good thing they got a whistle there. They were a little bit tired running that power play for two minutes. Still six seconds left to go in the power play for Inoka, and you see the shorthanded opportunity coming back here. Ended up being whistled down offside. Pretty good crowd on hand here tonight. Yeah, Jim. nice crowd here tonight. They had a special appreciation night where the players would list... Uh, you know, an individual could even be a fellow student or a teacher or an adult or a coach that had influenced them. So I don't know what the official title of tonight was. You know, teams do have teacher appreciation night, but it wasn't just teachers that were being honored here by each of the Anoka players here tonight. Influencer appreciation Influencer. night. That's the that's the uh, that's the title that I will give it here. A deflected puck at neutral comes towards us and out of play. 4-17 last second period. No scoring here this period. Well, you know, I, you bring that up and when I was coming in I saw Chase Everts who was on the 2003 state championship team and is a teacher and he was running through the parking lot but he was late. Kind of oh, like he was to practice right. quite often. <laughs> so some things just don't change. Some things just don't change. Saying. No. Yeah, it was really cool, a lot of those influencers. And I see volleyball coach Chris Fenwick, I believe he was one of them. He's sitting up there, upper row there. Great season for the Anoka volleyball team. Sure was. Back come the Tornadoes, looking for that first goal of the season. Suko. He comes walking in, carries it to the corner. Left side corner. Trying to center it out there with Soli. The junior third line, third line winger. Back comes Hay. Through center, gains the zone. All the way back around, loops. Up high, shot, save. Lafferty down on the ice, reaching around to her left side, and then it comes back around. And good defense there by the Tornadoes. Supporting their goaltender. That was uh, Carlson did a good job. Dancing in on that left wing, Murad. And now it'll sneak out of the zone. Back in. Totino Grace has to touch. Three minutes left in the second period. Shot from the right wing. And off the stick of Nedlin. Then off the goaltender Warren. Ends up behind the Totino Grace net. Eagles try to ring around here to the near side. Out, but no. Held in nicely at the point by Anoka. Now it's number 10, Parker Nedlin. We've called his name a lot here tonight. Yeah, three on two right there for Totino Grace and got nothing out of it. He won a little bit better effort right there from the, the Eagles. A lot of bodies out in front of that Anoka net, and then it comes free in a wrist shot by Blake Anderson. From the high slot, he threads the needle, and it's 3 nothing Totino Grace. Yeah, nice shot there by Anderson. He was uncovered out in the slot area. Two of the three goals by Tatino. Here's another look at it. It have been nice shots in the slot. He just turned, let it go. Once again, beating Lafferty up high, but nice shot there by Anderson. Anderson's second point of the night, his second goal of the season. And it occurs here relatively late of the second period at the 14-31 mark. And now our referee is going to come over. They may have given the wrong number for the goal as far as the player. And now we're all set. 3-0 to Tino Grace. You know, Noka was hanging right in there, too, here late into the second period. That one hurts right there, and a big goal for the Eagles. Yeah, like we mentioned before, Anoka really needed to be the next team to score. As Tino Grace loops back towards their line, Gallivan. Goals tonight, Horak, Gallivan, and Anderson. Will Warren, the goaltender for Tatino Grace. Oh, 
Fox and Pouch getting the assist. Anderson the goal, his second of the season. And Tatino now a little more breathing room here late in the second period. Gallivan up and around, up ahead for Anderson. Goal and assist here tonight for Blake Anderson. Anderson, yeah, no, a senior. No cannot get in any real close-in shots. All those shots have been from outside the, the circle. Tatino doing a nice job from keeping him away from that area in front of the net. Yeah, you got to get to the greasy areas. Yeah. I like to call that the grease pan, and that's exactly kind of what Tatino Grace has done a lot of here tonight. They've had some tight looks and some scrambles. Yeah, this one redirected, comes free. Another shot that just went wide by Durr. Yeah, just as you said that, Jim, I looked down there, and there's two guys right on the top of the blue. One minute left to go in the second period. Bodies here in the near corner. Down on the ice was Ben Box. Box assisted on that most recent goal. His ninth assist of the season. Quast has 10 assists. He leads the team. In that department here for Totino Grace coming into the game tonight. Eagles find it here with Trey Peck. Back down the far wall. Oslin centering pass into the skates. Durr, the intended recipient. Charlie Jensen corrals it along the far side. Final 20 seconds of the second period. Puck still along the end wall here in the Yanoka zone. Poked up again to the far side. Peck keeps it in. And the final seconds here of the second period are going to tick off and we'll go to the second intermission with a 3-0 to Tino Grace lead. What was your uh, thought on that second period, Pete? Well, you know what? Anoka worked really hard. You know, got some shots on goal. None of them, like I said, or you said, in the greasy area. But uh, Tatino Grace, just the better team in puck possession in the offensive end. Tatino Grace, three, Anoka, nothing. Along with Pete Hayes, I'm Jim Erickson, and you are watching High School Boys Hockey on QCTV Sports. Central Minnesota Cornhole. We're based out of uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota. We've been putting this state tournament on for, this is our fifth year now, and this is, uh, 2023 is the biggest state tournament we've had. Yesterday we had 306 singles, battling it out for a $1,500 prize for first, uh, split into several brackets. We pay out uh, uh, way down in the field, so any competition level can come to the state tournament and uh, have a possible chance to win some money and um, today we have 196 doubles teams which is the best turnout we've ever had in the history of the Minnesota State Cornhole Tournament. Um, we, we There's 20 different 20 plus cornhole groups throughout the state of Minnesota and they all come together in October and we play multiple tournaments for two days and with teams and singles and uh, four man, four person teams uh, for and, uh, just had a chance to win some money, have some fun and show off your skills. There's a lot of talented cornhole players in the state of Minnesota and um, the competition level in the last few years has really grown and the interest in the sport, a very inexpensive sport and a sport that any age, um, any you know, women, men, kids, juniors, anybody can play this game and compete at any level in this in this state. So um, it's been a very good adventure for us. We um, we put a lot of work into the state tournament. We have a lot of sponsors that uh, help us out. Uh, we have a title sponsor this year, Allstate Insurance, who uh, really provided a lot of uh, support for us, which helps us helps give our money back, the entry fees from the players, all back. We pay out 100% of the entry fees back to the players. But we want the players to enjoy this sport and come here and just have some fun. And the, the Minnesota Cornhole groups are 
are and the people that play are such a great group of people and really encourage other people to, to join the sport and play and have fun and enjoy themselves. Logan Sivak, I am the varsity girls head coach here at Anoka High School. You know, with this team, we have a fairly young team. We only have three seniors this year playing varsity. We're very junior heavy, and a lot of those juniors have been able to start since their freshman year, so they're bringing a lot of experience, and I think that experience that they're bringing uh, is just really something that's gonna help our, our younger girls that got into the program this year develop. So we have a very close-knit group that I think just is really gonna be able to trust and feed off each other as we get into the season. We had a couple of key seniors departure um, this year, but two of our highest scorers uh, are returning this season, which is awesome. And then we have a senior goalie this year. She's been able to start for the last two seasons, and she's really looking to make a big impact her senior year. And then we're lucky that we also have a junior goalie that can fill in for her as well that also plays stellar, and we're just feeling really good on the back end, and if we can put some pucks in the net with our returners, uh, we're feeling pretty confident about this year. So this year I'm so excited just to create a better bond with the teammates. It is my last season, so I'm just excited just to spend these times with them and kind of cherish every moment that I have with them and just kind of creating a good community around the locker room and the team. I'm hoping to leave the team with just a bunch of good energy and knowing that I'll be watching them next year, just kind of keeping the motivation going throughout the season. And then just kind of keeping the love for the game. It does get hard throughout the winter, but just trying to keep up the good energy going. I think a personal goal of mine was just trying to be a good role model for the teammates, especially for the freshmen coming up. I want them to know that they have a person to look, look towards to and yeah. I'm most excited to just see how things kind of progress from last year. So uh, last season in our first section game, we went into six overtimes, which was just a crazy game in itself. Uh, but I think just the way that we finished out that year and everything that we put into it, uh, you can kind of just feel a different buzz this year with the girls kind of feeling like, you know, after that, they just are really able to compete and ready to go. Um, I think that they feel like there's some unfinished business, and so they're really excited to get things going this year. Champlin Lifetime has been a staple in the community for over 20 years. It's so much more than just a fitness club, it's an experience. Whether you're into cardio, weightlifting, or maybe you just need a relaxing spa day in the sauna, followed by a delicious smoothie in the Life Cafe, Champlin Lifetime has you covered. You know, what I see a lot from our Champlin members is that they're really excited about, you know, the variety of things that they can do inside the club. Oh, did I mention the new pickleball courts? Because obviously pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the world right now. We want to bring amenities and programs to our clubs and we added three pickleball courts in there so we can have a better pickleball program for our Champlain residents around here. Obviously we have what's called open play time. This is where you sign up, you go to the court, and it's just like playing pickup basketball or pickup pickleball that you do at, at, a, at a park in the area here. For people who've never played pickleball before, we also have introduction to pickleball classes, right? So you can learn the rules, learn the scoring, learn how to hit the ball, the different types of shots that you can hit with our pickleball pro, Brad, who's an amazing coach. So I'd recommend anybody checking that out. We have leagues available for our members. We have clinics. We have one-on-one -on -one lessons. So all of this is open to all of our members, right? And to do that, to, to know what the pickleball schedule is, what's going on, when it's going on, download the Lifetime app and log in, go to the pickleball portion of the app, 
and you can schedule time to be in the pickleball course. So now whether it's free or fee-based, you do need to have a reservation because to preserve the experience out there, we can only have so many people out there at a time. When you talk on the fitness floor, obviously we have state-of-the-art equipment, we have swimming by the pool here, lap swim. We also have basketball, we still have a basketball court that for families, right, we have our child center. We have what's called Parents Night Out. So it's a couple Saturdays a month where you can drop your kids off in the evening and you and your spouse or whoever can go, go grab dinner, go to a movie, go grocery shopping, just get some time away from the kids, right? As a father of three, I can appreciate that as well. We offer birthday parties. If you wanna have your birthday party here, we have pool parties or gym parties that you can get involved with. And we also have Family Swim. You know, it's getting to be cold out here in Minnesota. Bring your kids up here and you can do Family Swim as a, as a family and have a great time there. You know, if you're watching this and you want to see what it's all about, I recommend come on down to the club, right? We do tours all day long. You can sign up online, you can sign up in club. There's no pressure, right? Come check it out, see what you think, and you know, we'll answer any questions you have, and hopefully you'll, you'll love it and have a great experience here. And with the cold season approaching, now is the perfect time to sign up or return. Champlin Lifetime has some very exciting new upgrades on the way. TV is proud to announce award recognition for 2022, including 10 Telly Awards, and two ACM Hometown Media Awards. QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support and we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV. For us, it's going to be, you know, just to try to get back to playing really good hockey. You know, we lost a lot of guys last year, and, and we want to get to a, a section final and give ourselves a chance to go to, to St. Paul. I think we have the guys that are going to be able to compete in that aspect, so we're going to, we're going to make sure we give it everything we got and, um, and, and work hard, get 1% better every day, and, and keep moving forward. We're not too flashy. We get the puck down low and work hard. I'm just excited to be here for one more year and just Hopefully, get to state this year. Been close the last two years. Hopefully, we can make that push. I'm just excited to get close with the guys and to build some chemistry and just uh, have the best senior year I possibly can. I'd say we're a pretty good team. Uh, we're pretty tight knit. We do a lot of stuff outside the rink, and I'd say kind of a we're, uh, I don't know, I think we're goofy a lot, but we can uh, get focused when we need to. I'm most excited for just a good year. Uh, I think we have a good chance to do some pretty cool stuff, and we're a really uh, tight-knit group, so hopefully it'll be a fun season with everyone. You know, I think last year we had a lot of top-end talent uh, that we lost. Um, a lot of good leadership with their senior group and, and whatnot, but uh, with this team, you know, they, they just kind of, they, they took it as now it's their turn, right? And they're gonna they're gonna take advantage of that opportunity, and, and they're gonna you know they're gonna fight. They're gonna be very very competitive all year long. Um, we'll be in a lot of really really good close games, and then you know hopefully surprise some teams this year. Ready to go tomorrow. Good job today. Get a break. Pick them up. Got two boys. That's all right. Let's go. That was our three. One, two, three. Let's go. Right away. Teams heading back out on the ice here at the Anoka Area Ice Arena. Have ourselves some Thursday night high school boys hockey, and it's 3-0 to Tino Grace. We head to the third period, and second period, Anoka got off to a decent start, had some chances early on, and then Champlain Park came back, and 
Boy, they were putting the heat on that Anoka net. Much of that uh, second period with some close-in looks. Yeah, Lauren Lafferty did a nice job uh, for Anoka, keeping them in the game. Tornadoes had the only power play and uh, generated some shots in that power play, but unable to get one past the netminder Will Warren for Totino Grace. You see another nice save by Lafferty. Scrambling play, Totino Grace pressuring the Anoka net. And here's the one where it came free. And Anderson again shooting high and beating Lafferty up high with Blake Anderson there. Scoring his second goal of the season. That goal occurred relatively late in the second period, 14-31 of the second. Box and Pouch getting the assists. And that made it 3-0 to Tino Grace. And that is where we're at here tonight heading into the third period. Yeah, I like this to Tino Grace team. It looks like they can go three lines deep and four or five defensemen. No, for Anoka, you got to just keep working. Keep working, keep working. See what you can get done the rest of this season and build on the next season. So I'm sure with Coach Machulis, he'll keep these kids working all year long. And, you know, every once in a while, you're going you're gonna to get a win. And, and uh, maybe you can get something going here. The Ben Box line to start here. Box entering uh, Anderson and Horak. Cedar Strand, Dahlvang, and Lang. Alec Dolvang, junior centerman with three goals. Out to center the line and take this face-off here to start period three. Still some wet spots on the ice. Just to our left in the Totino Gray zone. And right off of the draw, it slides in on Lafferty. And she'll play it safe. Four seconds in, face-off in the Anoka zone. Yeah, and Totino Grace has been winning probably 75% of the draws here so far uh, in this hockey game. So that's not the best thing to freeze the puck down there. Let's see how this one turns out. Face-offs for the game, 19-8 to in favor of Totino Grace. As Anoka breaks it out here in the center circle. Backhand heave by Dahlvang, bouncing it in on Warren. Back behind the netminder along the end wall now here in the Eagle zone. Poked by Durr, but not out. Tornadoes would love a push here, maybe get one early in the third period, get this to a two-goal game. Forced back in his own zone, Mason Beaver. Banked off the wall right to another number three, Thomas Quast. Outside the blue line, thrown in, save Lafferty. And Tornadoes from along their end wall, looking to work it again. Beaver kicks it away with the skate. Headman pass, a little bit too long. Intercepted Oslin and then bounced in just wide of the tornado net. Ends up behind the net. Minute in here in the third period. Yeah, I'd like to see the Anoka defenseman skate the puck a little bit, just forcing it up the boards. Look for that center. Centering pass out in front and trying to lift it over the goaltender was Oslin. Lafferty may have made uh, contact with it, and it went up over the cage. Cleared down here by Anoka, no icing. Boy, that was a good opportunity there for Totino Grace. Lauren Lafferty comes up with the save. Gallivan through center, through traffic, comes in on side. Left wing trying to track it down Morad. Corner to corner here on the near side. Big check right into that corner, but held in deep here by Totino Grace. Eagles play their home games at the Brooklyn Park Ice Arena. They've got it back behind the net. From down low, out in front, centering pass. Puck is still loose. Lafferty tried to pick it up and re reached out to try and cover it. And that took her out of position, and Totino Grace takes advantage and uh, scores that into a mostly open net. Roger Murad is going to uh, get the goal, it appears. Number 21, that'll be his fifth of the season, 4 nothing. Totino Grace. Yeah, Totino Grace is rewarded for getting people down in front of the net and mucking it up. Anoka not moving them out of there. When Lafferty went for the puck, all that was standing there was an eagle, and it's in the back of the net, and we're at 4-0. Here's another look at it right here. It's Lafferty's down. Goes down, misses the puck. A little backhander in the yeah, back of the net. She tried to smother that, but there was a stick that was there, so she couldn't get that glove firmly on the ice. Yeah, Noka couldn't afford to give that one up. 4-0, it's a long road back for him right now. Keep working, see what happens. Hay and Pekarski getting the assist. Murad the goal. 
And for Murad, that is his uh, fifth of the season. Sophomore here for Totino Grace, and now a little more breathing room for them. It's four to nothing. They get to it again here in the offensive zone. Wide into the corner. Off the side of the net. Another centering pass out in front, and it's tipped in. On the goaltender, Blake Anderson with a bid for his uh, second of the game. And Lafferty there quick with a glove to make the save and hold on. Yeah, the blood's in the water right now, Jim, and uh, Tatino Grace feeling good about their game, and everybody wants to join in on the score sheet right now. Lauren Lafferty doing a nice job for Anoki, even though they're down 4-0. Four different goal scorers here tonight to Tatino Grace. Trying to get above 500, coming in at 5-5. Five and five. They curl away out in front. Horak, it's in the crease. Puck is still loose now covered there by Lafferty. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. They cannot be standing there. you got to move them out. It's making things really tough on your goaltender, it, isn't it? It uh, sure is. Not only does she have to deal with the puck, she's got to worry about those guys in the blue shirts. Face-off win here by Anderson. Up to Pouch. Back left side, Gallivan throws it wide. Puck back into the corner. Skating up high is Box. Back in low, Horak. Again, there's uh, Horak, 6-1, big forward. Winning the battle along the along the, uh, the wall. Those wall battles at size and strength certainly can help. Sent the other way, and the Eagles will go back and get it. Well, that's one way to get it out right there. Yes. Past the three-minute mark here of the third period. Anoka, long bank pass right onto the stick of Lang. Comes in on the right side. He's got a defender on him. And it's picked off here by the Eagles. Clayton Durr. Durr looks to the middle with a wrist shot. Big pad save left side by Lafferty. Kicked it out of there. Buck comes back towards the circle. Intercepted Tornadoes. Pass handcuffed Lang a little bit. Ends up in the Totino zone. Peck. Durr. Stick to stick, Oslin gains a zone, tried to drag it to the middle. Tornadoes stay strong defensively. Over to Kudrowski, his wrist shot high over the glove and over the cage, off the glass, stays in play. Four minutes into the third period. Two goals in the first, one in the second, and now one here in the third for Totino Grace. And Kudrowski gets a shot in upper half of the near circle. Gloved and held on to by Lauren Lafferty, junior netminder. Here's another look at it, held in at the point. Coming right down that slot area, and Lafferty comes out, challenges, makes the shave. Cuts down the angle here with 12.51 remaining. Near side draw. I'd like to see Anoka do a little bit better on gap control on their defenders. They're, they're backing into their goalie. They need to, need to shut that down and get out after them on top of the circle instead of letting them back them in. Hay wins the draw, pulls it to the point. It's right back in on Lafferty. Gloved and held on. Another faceoff coming up. You see number 33 there, the junior. Faceoff on her gloved hand side. Back around by Totino Grace. Morad, most recent goal scorer, made it 4-0. Just minutes ago here in the third period. Totino Grace getting that forecheck going again. Hay stolen away. Tornado's up to center. And it's along the line, would have been offside, so they have to dance along the line. Ends up back in the tornado end. Anoka breakout, stick to stick. Here's Sukup. Up ahead to the line, Bruner. Bruner bumped off, still able to play the puck. Held in nicely here the near side at the point by Nedlin. Backhands it, intercepted in the slot. Pushed up and out Murad. Front of the benches, spins around. He'll step step over the boards as he bounced it into the Anoka zone. Tornado's back here right to left. Coming in Mortensen and his wrist shot. That sails into the corner. Gallivan grabs the rebound. Gabe Gallivan, another big defenseman. He's 6'1", good size, practically 190. Picked off, Sukup comes in, and a shot from the left side. He almost snuck that one in on the short side. Just bringing that arm in, it appeared at the right time. At the last moment was Warren to make the save. Cleared by the Eagles, and they'll be called for icing. Maybe that's the first time they've been called for icing here tonight. It hasn't happened too often. Face-off back in the Totino zone, and will join uh, Will Warren. 
Well, that was about the best two minutes I've seen in Oka all night long. A couple of nice breakouts. Uh, defenseman skating the puck up the ice, getting it into the zone, moving the puck. So a nice job by Anoka right there. Uh, the first part of this period, it's been all to Tino Grace. Their feet moving and Anoka's not. But those last couple of minutes there, a nice job by Anoka. Tornadoes would uh, love to get on the board. They were shut out their most recent game up in Duluth against Park of Cottage Grove. That was 7-0 as Totino comes in and they attack with Blake Anderson. It's in the glove again of Lafferty. Yeah, Noka losing 7-0 uh, to Park Cottage Grove, and Totino beat Park Cottage Grove just a couple weeks ago, 5-2. Yep, that was the game on uh, December 22nd. Totino Grace lost to War Road. They lost to Thief River Falls. They went up to War Road and also Thief River Falls, so they had a nice little road trip there just before Christmas. Back in December as the Tornadoes tip it back out. Most recent game was at home at Brooklyn Park, a 3-2 win over St. Louis Park. There was a time there before they started playing their games at Brooklyn Park. They, they would play their home games at the Parade Ice Arena in Minneapolis. Left wing, in on the left wing drive, Durr, blocked by bodies. Durr back after the rebound. Durr looking to center it, lost his stick, picks it up, and picking the puck up now are the Tornadoes. They look to break out. Long pass ahead, a little bit too far. Couldn't complete it to Lang, and Totino turns it right back up with Horak coming in. Tornado gets back on the back check, intercepts, cleared all the way down. Jensen trying to get to it, but he can't in time as it crosses that goal line extended. Ends up being an, an icing here on the Anoka Tornadoes. We take a look at the upcoming schedule here for Anoka boys hockey. You see there already here we're showing Andover on the 20th. By that point in time, we've got less than a month left. Yeah, it's crazy. Pretty much in the regular season. Anoka's uh, last regular season game is February 10th. Totino Grace's uh, last regular season game is February 13th. Yeah, no one skated on an outdoor rink yet this year. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> almost impossible. There's no ice. I'm assuming it'll be cold enough for uh, Hockey Day Minnesota and War Road coming up later. Well, the cold's supposed to be coming here yes. in the next couple of weeks. Whether the snow will or not, which is actually pretty good for ice making if you're an ice fisherman. You'd rather have the ice without any snow on it. Make some nice, clean, strong ice. And this one's going to be flipped way up out of play. Trying to chip it off that glass, and it's way into the... Upper deck here at the Anoka Area Ice Arena. And the faceoff will go back into the Anoka zone with 9.37 remaining in the third period. It's 4 nothing. Yeah, Totino Grace is going to be a team that I wouldn't want to play them come playoff time. I mean, they, they have some high-end skilled players. They seem to have some depth. You know, we haven't really been able to see what the goaltending's like, but they're a nice-looking team. They lost to Centennial also in their section 5AA. They lost to them 7-2. to two. And uh, that is their only game against a section opponent here so far this season. Now they were Class A for a number of years. And then they opted up here to AA, 5AA. I want to say that was 2019, 2018, 2019, somewhere in there. So they're in with Maple Grove and Rogers. And those teams in Section 5 AA Centennial. And Anoka, of course, in 7 AA. Maple Grove having another nice season. Yeah, they've climbed up the rankings. Rogers has dropped a little bit after the holiday tournaments. Anoka comes in, fanning on that shot on the right wing, Fulstrom. He had the game-winning overtime goal. The most recent win here for Anoka was that uh, win against Mankato West up at the Heritage Hockey Classic in Duluth. That was a 3-2 win on December 27th, a week ago yesterday. As we get a whistle, we'll get a face off here in the Totino Gray zone. It probably wasn't even that cold in Thief River Falls and War Road for him. No, probably not. <laughs> It'll be cold when uh, you're with St. Cloud State and you go and play play up in uh, Grand Forks. Grand Forks Huskies yeah. don't go to Grand Forks oh, this year. North Dakota right, comes down yeah. to St. Cloud, but this is one of the years in rotation that the Huskies do not go to Grand Forks, which I'm disappointed because I love calling games at Ralph Engelstad Arena. That place is just absolutely bonkers. 
The fans can be obnoxious up there, of course, but uh, that's what yeah. they've done, and that's kind of their their mantra. But it makes for a fun atmosphere, certainly, for uh, the games up at Grand Forks. Tatino Grace, long pass ahead, a little bit behind Haraki, settles it down, and that's pushed away by Lafferty. 4-0 our score. And the puck ends up going down the ice. And Tatino will reset again. Kodrowski gets motoring the other way. Long feet ahead. Right under the stick of the Eagles. They plop it over on the left wing. Peck shot all the way through. That was pushed by the blocker of Lafferty. Lafferty does a nice job with her blocker. She can uh, direct pucks. Push them off to the corner. She's done that a couple of times here tonight. Eagles come back in here in the near wing with a centering pass. And uh, bump down was Durr. Durr then to Peck. Back to the left side. Intercepted but not out. Peck's got it again. Left wing Heifert. Takes a shot. Lots of bodies out in front here for Adoka. Getting some coverage around their net. So we have seven minutes left to go here in the game. Yeah, that third line for Anoka trying to get it out. They do a job right there. You know, these are kid, young kids who come up from JV, and all of a sudden you're playing varsity, and you get that puck on your stick, and you're like, "Yes, I just got to get it out." You know, <laughs> right. and yeah. might have room to skate, and you know, the, the game is so much faster that next step from JV to varsity, and and they'll learn, they'll get better as yeah. they go. Well, this is how you learn. Absolutely, you get in these yep, games. Absolutely. To the upcoming schedule for the Eagles at Spring Lake Park, their next game. Coming up on Saturday. 6.45 left. Tornadoes bouncing in. Warren goes down, makes the stick save. Warren hasn't been challenged much here tonight. A lot of the shots have been from the perimeter here for the Tornadoes. Back comes Totino. Pekarski back behind the net. Crashing in is Hay. And now the Tornadoes go rink wide here to the near side. They find the stick of Mortensen. Morrison overskated a bit, then got it in the zone and swings it back around. Pinching down, Cedar Strand, right winger with three goals on the season. Now the Eagles, their breakout out of the reach of Bakarski. That's going to go all the way down. That'll be icing. And it's been well, maybe two or three times here tonight that icing would have been waved off if they went with the hybrid icing. I wonder if they'll ever do that in high school. You know, that started in college. Actually started in the pros and probably international, and then it, it's, it's filtered its way down to college, and we'll see if it ever makes its way down to the high school level. Well, this is the state that'll do it if yes. anybody does. And I think it's proven at the other, because the, the fear of that, the automatic icing, of course, is the safety part of it. Players uh, racing down the ice trying to win the, win the race. Back in the old days, that race was just to get to the puck, not across the line or anything. Just getting to the puck and touching up. And there were injuries along the end wall. Then they went to the automatic icing. And now the hybrid icing where the face-off dots, basically the finish line. I've had a chance to watch some Bantams games this year. And you cannot ice it yes. when you're shorthanded. And uh, it really makes a difference. It does. <laughs> that is a big change. It really and makes a difference. whether that will make its way up to the higher levels too, that's something to watch. Because that's a main weapon of your penalty killing. Absolutely. It really takes a tool out of the box, but obviously that's going to open up more scoring than on the power play. I'm sure power play percentages are at that level are probably higher than they had been with the previous system. The only thing I don't like about it is you have a lot more whistles because that's true. people are right. trying to chip it out and it's all of a sudden it's, it's iced. And that would be tough. I don't know if they would ever do that at the level of hockey where you can't change on an icing. Right. Right. You know, if you are if you're killing penalties, I mean that would be a huge deterrent to throwing huge. the puck down there because you got four guys out there and they've already been defending, defending, defending. There's another shot, and it's scooped up by Lafferty. If they're killing penalties and they've just spent the how much time in their uh, in their zone, and then they ice it, and okay, we got another face off. It's we're right back in the zone, but we also on top of that can't change. Right, and you know what? That would lead to more injuries because yeah. guys yeah. would be gassed out there. So maybe if they did do that, they would then bring in the rule. That one fluttered in off the crossbar from the point. Lafferty did not see it, but hit the crossbar. Held in here by Tatino Grace and trying to go top shelf. Osland 
Misses the crossbar this time and goes out of play. 4.47 left, 4 nothing to Tina Grace. Maybe they would uh, have a different rule there that if you are on the penalty kill, it's still icing, but you would be able to change maybe. Well, they would need something like that yeah. for sure at yeah. that level. I'll tell you what, Lauren Lafferty, she's got a little goalie. Yes. You know, she's going to yeah. get some some big-time schools taking a look at her. Yeah. You know, she's out here going against guys. and. And uh, there's going to be some women college programs out there that are going to want to yeah, take a great. look at her. Yeah. Oh, again, she fight, fights it off of the blocker, pushes it back up the slot. You know, the boys here on the boys' team, she was a goalie last year along with Rosano. They had a need for a goalie. They were deep at goalie on the, gir the girls' program. We're going to get a uh, penalty coming up here on Anoka. It'll be the second penalty of the night. First on Anoka. First power play for Totino Grace and a tripping call. And heading to the box, Sukup. So a tripping call there. Power play for Totino Grace. Yeah, that's something Anoka's done a nice job staying out of the box tonight early on in the season. They took a ton of penalties and you know, when you have the firepower that they have and, and they labor to score, you can't be in that penalty box. And so Coach Machulis and his staff have done a nice job in cleaning that up. Yeah, you want to keep Tatino Grace off the power play. 34.6%, 9 of 26. They've only had 26 power play chances compared to Anoka's 54. Anoka's had twice as many power play chances. As they work it across the zone, up to the point, Quast. Back into the corner, Durr in the middle box, and it's Quast again. Under four minutes remaining here in our game. Still 4 0 to Tino Grace. Wrist shot through, but wide. End wall, puck picked up. Tatino works it up and down the wall here with Peck. Peck sets up, and a shot in the lower half of the circle ends up in the glove of Lafferty with a minute 17 left to go in that penalty and that tripping called on Sukup. Tried to go over the top of uh, Lafferty. Again, they've scored two of their four that way. And, you know, you think Tatino would have more power plays the way that they go to the front of the net. Yeah, it yeah. is surprising. You know, they've played two less or three less games than Anoka. Anoka's played 13 games. Tatino Grace has played 10 entering tonight. So that factors in a little bit into that uh, difference. Cross ice pass. Making the move over was Lafferty. Ends up into the corner. Up the wall, Durr, and then they work it on the near side. Gallivan, Quast, gives it up left side. Centering pass, Box, tried to go cross. Crease cleared off the glass and down by Anoka. 40 seconds left in the Totino Gray's power play. Yeah, I can see where they're at 30-some percent. They move the puck pretty well. Quast has got it at those Big defenseman, they can move the puck, they can skate. Gallivan is one of those defensemen. He gets bumped down here in the near side corner. He was already losing an edge. Tornado's up to the wall, but not out. Box, cross ice pass, left side shot, Quast hits bodies out in front with traffic. Durr, 10 seconds left in the power play for Totino Grace. With under two and a half left in the game. Slapper, wide by Quast. Well, you don't see those very often anymore. No, it's a lot of wrist shots. Shots, snap shots. Snap shots and wrist shots. And back to full strength. Tornadoes have Suka back out of the box and back to five on five. Both teams have killed off the penalty that they've uh, faced here tonight. Both teams have had one power play and both teams 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. Tornadoes, Ben Carlson sweeps it into the zone. Under two minutes left here in the game tonight. Tino stick to stick, Trey Peck. Peck feeds Hay. Hay to the middle. Wide on the glove side. End wall Karam. Cedar Strand here for the Tornadoes. Got it tangled up a little bit. Picked off by Peck. Waiting out in front for a centering pass. Wayland Black for Totino Grace. And instead picked off. Tornadoes turn it back the other way. Under 90 seconds remaining. Crashing in, Parker Nedlin for Anoka. Goes in hard along the wall with the uh, bigger 6'5", Heifert. Gus Hay in his own zone for Totino Grace. Gets it around. Heifert's got it again. Bounces it up off the glove. Black tried to swat it the other way, and instead the Tornadoes dump it in. 
Yeah, Noka not a lot of scoring opportunities here in the third period. Here's one. That was picked off. Trying to control it, Bruner. Now they have to play it back out to center, Morrison. Bruner did a nice job jumping that pass. Just could not settle it down and get it to a position where he could shoot it from the slot with under a minute. Now 40 seconds remaining in tonight's game. Behind the net, Sukup. Now it's trapped along that end wall there at the Zamboni door. Heifert. This is so big. He just, his base is so wide. Hard to bump him off his skates. Nice move at the blue line. Folstrom comes in and a penalty coming. And then the Anoka player, an Anoka player crashes into the netminder. That was, uh, I think that's 12, Carson Nedlin. And to Tino Grace taking exception on 17, that's Bruner, who was crashing in because the puck was loose. Let's take a look at it. Well, there's the call right there, the first call on, on Folstrom, I believe. Yeah. Was it a cross check as he was coming in? What did they give him? I think we're going to get two penalties here. Maybe goalie interference too. Yeah, Bruner kind of crashed into the goaltender there. But cross check penalty on Fulstrom and what we call goalie interference or yeah. charge maybe. Face off will come all the way back here to the Anoka zone. With just 18 seconds left to go, 4 nothing. So this will officially load up to Tino Grace's power play chances here. This will go as two power plays. It's going to be five on three with uh, two minors called on the same play. Yeah, Noka's showing a little frustration here yeah. at the end of the game. And off of the faceoff, Tatino wins that draw. Over to Gallivan. Quast, shot save. And it was goalie interference against Fulstrom. Here's the upcoming broadcast schedule here for you. Boys basketball, Hudson, Wisconsin, making a trip to Andover High School. Like it. St. Cloud Tech at Anoka right here on the 12th. Quick slap shot and at the flex from out in front. And goes up and out of play. And with three seconds left, we'll have one more drop of the puck here before the end of this one here from the Anoka Area Ice Arena. And Tatino Grace is going to uh, jump up above 500 here. They were a 1.3-3. Be their first time they've been above 500 here this season as you get the horn. And our final here tonight, 4 0 in favor of the Totino Grace Eagles. They shut out the Anoka Tornadoes, a shutout to Will Warren, the netminder, his first shutout of the season. And Totino Grace came in here as a road team and they took care of business here to get their sixth win of the season. Yeah, absolutely. They've been playing some good hockey here and uh, they're hoping to continue on as the season goes on. Anoka. Keep working hard, boys, and uh, come out and see what you can do in your next game. It's their fifth win in their last seven games here for Totino Grace and uh, three wins in a row as they got two goals in the first, one goal in the second, and one goal in the third to get the win here tonight. Totino Grace improving, as we mentioned, 6-5-0. Oh, their first conference win here tonight as well, 1-2-0. and oh. And again, next up on their schedule, they will be at Spring Lake Park on Saturday. Of course, that's at Fogarty Arena. They'll host Coon Rapids at Brooklyn Park Ice Arena on January 9th. Anoka on the season falling to 2-12, uh, and 0-5 oh in the conference. Their next game, Cambridge I Sandy here at Anoka on Saturday at 3 o'clock. And they host Elk River on January 11th. For Pete Hayes, I'm Jim, Jim Erickson. For our entire crew here at the Anoka Area Ice Arena, again our final tonight. Tatino Grays 4, Anoka nothing. You've been watching high school boys hockey at QCTV Sports.